Shanti, how are you? So, everybody is familiar with the ongoing protests regarding wearing hijab in schools and colleges in Karnataka. So, it all started with a school administration not allowing students wearing hijab inside the classroom. So, slowly it erupted into other colleges and schools and students of Hindu community, they started wearing saffron robes and they said, if you are going to allow hijab, then why can't you allow us wear these saffron robes as well? So the real problem is not about wearing hijab or wearing saffron clothes. It's all about that it interferes with the uniform code, which was introduced in good faith about bringing uniformity among students and to remove social discrimination. So that's the actual issue because what we use as uniform is something that we have copied from the Western culture. There are many schools where um, school girls are wearing short skirts, which is highly tempting, especially at this time where we find many cases where teachers, uh, male teachers misbehave with their girl students. I think it is time to reconsider whether or not we need to stick with those kind of uniform. Just to protest against Muslim girls wearing hijabs in certain schools and colleges, girls started wearing saffron scarves. Actually, it is not foreign to Indian culture. Even now, North Indian girls have this habit of covering their faces with saris. But in schools, we don't follow that. But both wearing hijabs and uh, covering head with scarves, it's part of Indian culture or Hindu culture. It is the idea that uh, making or forcing students to wear uniform will remove discrimination that has caused this problem in the first place. In most colleges, they don't wear uniform. So they don't fight with each other. They um, love each other despite their different uh, community backgrounds. So allowing students, school students to wear saffron clothes or hijab will never create any discrimination amongst students. Actually, those kids, they are very pure at heart. They don't know about these social discrimination. It is only the minds of adults that get corrupted. So after leaving this school in the street, they are going to find people wearing um, hijab and parda and people wearing saffron clothes. They don't quarrel with each other. Actually, they love each other. So wearing uniform is in no way going to remove discrimination or it's not going to do any favor in the first place. All it does to the parents, to the middle class parents is they need to um, allow a huge amount of money for the uniform, including shoes and ties, which is not appropriate for uh, the regions where the climate is pretty cold, uh, sorry, pretty hot. One interesting thing happened in a college where a girl with parda entered the premise and she was surrounded by Hindu students shouting the slogan Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram. Now, this girl retaliated them by shouting Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The funny thing is, 
it's very similar to a group of people shouting pony 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 and another group of people they think they are giving retaliation and they start shouting water 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 yeah so both jay shri ram and allah akbar they mean the same thing but the funny thing is the people shouting jay shri ram they absolutely do not know anything about their ram they are praising they don't even know that they are praising because the shouting uh, sounds like they are uh, using some angry weapon against the other person likewise the people who are using allah akbar they don't know anything about allah all they know is what they read from their religious scriptures all religions especially three major religions of the world hinduism christianity and islam those religious scriptures all say at some point that god wanted somebody to kill the other people do you think god has that kind of character if he does how can we call him merciful right all those religious scriptures and the religions have nothing to do with god they don't represent the real qualities of god or they don't represent the real direct knowledge of god the slogan jay shri ram means shri means the great or the greatest and jay victory victory to ram the great and allahu akbar means allah is the greatest so both represents the same thing not only that both allah and ram refers to a single god Rel- religious scriptures are not the history books people think the stories those religious scriptures carry actually happened in the past but in reality they didn't happen if the, if it did it it's actually insulting god rather than glorifying god people in kali yug they have become so dumb that they can't differentiate between the insult and glorifying if a person kills hundreds of people and you are praising him as the embodiment of peace don't you think it's an insult because the gods represented in all religious scriptures they refer god to be a murderer or he uh, forced his followers to murder somebody so when you say he is love it's actually an insult right as per ramayan rama's wife sita was kidnapped by ravan and ram fights with ravan and brings her back so that's the essence of ramayan so what is there in this story to glorify ram anybody whose wife gets kidnapped will fight back especially kaliyug people will do that so does it mean we should worship them as god you wouldn't understand anything about god by spending even your uh, whole lifetime in reading all religious scriptures it's just a waste of time because you are not going to find anything about god no matter how great a person is he may be a religious founder but still he knows nothing about god the only way to know about god is when god himself comes to earth and gives his own introduction is it possible for him to come well if he doesn't come at all why should we bother worshiping about worshiping him in the first place he should come
only then he is God. And when does he come? He should come when we need him the most. It is this time we need him the most. Because the world is filled with confusion, utter peacelessness, murders, rapes. So we all want peace that can never be granted by humans. Because it is by following the path of humans that we have turned world into what we see now. So only God can rescue us. Yes, he comes in the end. So that is revealed in Bible and also Hindu scriptures that Kalki Bhagavan will come in the end. And second coming of Jesus Christ happens in the end. But it's not going to be Jesus Christ or Kalki that comes in the end. But the God himself is going to come in the end. Because whether it's Jesus Christ or Sri Krishna, they all took birth in a mother's womb. They have their own body. But nobody has seen God. Nobody can ever see God. The reason for that is he never takes birth like we do. Instead, he enters an old man's body directly in the last hundred years of Kali Yuk. Hundred years before the destruction of this old world, God comes to reveal a secret that is necessary to uh, necessary for us to get rid of all the punishments that we are facing due to our past sinful acts in this birth and previous births. For that, he reveals the 5,000 year old world drama. The first 2,500 years is heaven, followed by the next 2,500 years this world becomes hell. Yes, we are living in hell. But the good news is it's very soon going to be converted to heaven. So that's why God comes in the end and he reveals the news about the birth of heaven. And also he says that we are not eligible as of now to take birth in heaven. Because we are filled with these five vices, lust, anger, greed, attachment and ego. Though some religions say that th these are sins, uh, but only very few religions say that, especially lust. No religions directly say that lust is the number one sin. Though it is mentioned in Gita, Bhagavad Gita. Even if it does, they don't say the solution to get rid of lust altogether. So that is the reason we are facing so many problems because of the sins we have committed due to our addiction to these five vices. But we have been addicted to these five vices only for the past 2500 years. That is why it is called hell. The reason that we became addicted to these vices is because we considered ourselves wrongly to be this perishable body because of which we became addicted to sensual pleasures. Before that, in the first 2500 years, we were not addicted to vices. We didn't know what lust, anger, greed, attachment and ego are. The reason for that is we didn't consider ourselves to be the perishable body. Instead, we considered ourselves to be an imperishable soul that shines like a tiny star in between the eyebrows, which is why Hindus have this habit of wearing religious symbols in between the eyebrows. But the funny part of it is Nobody knows the reason why they wear that. 
Since they do not know the reason, they came out with some other scientific reasons like it's causing some uh, cold effect in between the eyebrows or um, some kind of hypnotic effect is created by wearing bindis or uh, it uh, protects you from getting hypnotized by bad people. They come up with all these reasons but the simple reason is that's where we are. This body is just the clothes that the soul wears. It is the soul that sees through the eyes, that speaks through the mouth, that listens through the ears, that performs all actions with our body parts. After the soul leaves this body, though we have eyes, ears, mouth, none of them could function on its own. So it is the soul that operates this body according to its will and this soul gets absolutely corrupted now but it was very pure in the beginning it is so pure that they do not know what lust is they were thousand times or billion times more pure than the newborn child just think about how pure they were what is the reason because they were soul conscious they didn't consider themselves to be the body to be this perishable body not only that they would experience utter blissfulness throughout their life because blissfulness is the true nature of the soul but after becoming body conscious in hell we no longer experience utter blissfulness from this soul so we wanted to derive sensual pleasures from external sources because of which we uh, hurt ourselves and hurt others but we never get satisfied so that's the characteristics of the sensual pleasures because of which god asked us to get rid of those addictions how do you do that because we are addicted because we our souls have no power to get out of that addiction it is by becoming body conscious and by indulging in sinful acts that our souls lose more and more power it has lost almost all its power now which is why we get triggered very easily we triggered sexually very easily we get anger we get angry over petty things so this particular incident of wearing hijab in schools and colleges is a good example of how weak we human souls are at this present situation at this present time this hijab incident is just an instrument to bring out the uh, to reflect our weakness that's it whether such protests happen or not it is true that we are filled with anger lust ego attachment it is there just a slight trigger is you know for us to burst out so what we see in this hijab issue is just a tip of an iceberg and what happened in indo pakistan division those uh, communal riots between hindus and muslims is just a trailer the main picture is yet to come in the end it is true that india is the most peaceful place on earth it is equally true india is going to be turned upside down in the near future especially after the third world war when all other countries get destroyed by atomic bombs only india is going to be left out and that's when this communal violence is going to break out in full strength 
that's the day of judgment that's when we are going to be punished for what for these five vices if you are filled with lust you are going to act that out on some minor girl or some uh, illegal relationships then you are going to get punished not by police because police station hospitals they won't be there in the end there won't be any current there will be no cctv cameras so when there is absolutely nobody to control humans just think how the world would look like if a hindu looks at this hijab incident here it is very possible that he will be triggered at least to a certain extent likewise if a muslim watches this incident obviously he will also be triggered at least to a minor extent after witnessing this hijab issue this just reveals how weak we are so there's a pretty good chance that we are going to be punished very intensely if you don't take action to remove these weaknesses how do you do that first you need to remember you considered yourself to belong to a certain religion because you are born into that religion which means your body is taken from that religion but you are not this perishable body you need to understand that you are the soul that acts through this body that's it and the soul is eternal everlasting so a hindu might be a muslim in his past birth and might be a christian in his next birth just because you think you are this body you consider yourself as a christian or muslim or hindu and quarrel over this petty things over religious beliefs so god from his supreme abode which is a golden red colored light world called parandam or parlok or the soul world god comes here and enters an old man's body and reveals the truth about why we suffer it is because of our addiction to these five vices that we suffer and he shows us the way to fill the soul with power to get out of those addiction to these vices and what is that it is very simple just by remembering god as a point of light uh, and also by considering yourselves to be the soul that is distinct from this body that your soul becomes pure the more amount of time you dedicate in the remembrance of god more is your soul gets pure so by filling the soul with the power of purity you will find yourself coming out of the addiction to these five vices and also the attractions to the worldly things so though it is god who says this truth to us but still not everybody is going to accept god even those who accept god they are not going to put the same kind of effort so obviously there will be rankings so the one who gets the first rank and becomes 100% pure just like god claims the highest status in heaven which is the status of sri narayan he as the first king of heaven it could be you or me it all depends on the amount of uh, sincere effort we put so anybody can become narayan if he is ready to remember only god all the time so all we need to do is to remember god as a point of light there is we uh, you have to imagine god as a chinese star shining in a golden red colored light world so that's how we should remember and this is very simple 
but this is the raj yoga that enables the residents of this hell to become the residents of heaven by purifying ourselves so by making ourselves to get out of the addiction of these five vices what happens is the vices get destroyed along with the destruction of the old world so only those who have conquered vices especially the lust they are eligible to enter heaven so that's the place where there is absolutely no vices even childbirth happens out of the power of thought or the yogic power if a husband and a wife wants to have a child the women gets pregnant that's how the childbirth happens in heaven which is why hindus still did have this habit of building the temple for deities and worship them what makes them worth of worship is the level of purity they possessed those deity souls who were originally pure in the beginning becomes impure in the end and it's none than us yes we were deities in the beginning and after losing the soul power by the attraction to the worldly things we or facing all the problems in the form of diseases debt poverty natural calamities world war and so on so god comes to rescue these souls by making it soul conscious again so these five vices lust anger greed attachment and ego it is present both in men and women which is commonly called the ten headed dragon other than that there was absolutely no person with ten head as depicted in ramayana if a person with two heads is born obviously we know he is going to face a lot of trouble living needless to say about three heads or four heads so you know logically it is totally impossible for a person to have ten heads and also uh, be very strong in attacking the whole human kind so it is a subtle thing that we need to understand it is these five vices that is represented as ten headed raven in hinduism or even we call it maya and in uh, christianity and islam it is these same five vices that they call as satan it is we souls that is represented as sita in ramayana we souls got kidnapped by those five vices which is ravan and god shiv comes in the end to rescue the souls from the clutches of ravan how by giving knowledge he doesn't fight with him because he doesn't possess ravan because he he doesn't have a body of his own so he is never addicted to, to these vices so it is by giving knowledge he is enabling us to fight against ravan which is why in ramayan it is mentioned that ram was hiding behind a mountain and he shot arrow at vali the brother of sukriv what it actually means is god doesn't have a body on his own so obviously he needs to take another man's body on loan so which is represented as god hiding behind a mountain which is his hiding behind this body that is the body of an old man and he names him brahma so it is through brahma's mouth god shiva delivers this divine knowledge directly to humans in the end and that knowledge is called morally which is available absolutely free of cost in all raj yoga meditation centers across the globe so the there are several youtube channels and websites that has this morally and i will give you 
I'll be giving the links of those things in the description below this video. Please make use of it because it is only that knowledge which is called morally that's going to enable you to enter heaven. All other religions were created by the residents of hell to live in hell, to make the world more and more worse. It may sound good on the surface, but when you take it so deeply, you will find yourself getting more and more corrupted and that's the reason the world is how it appears now. So all we need to do now is to remember God as a point of light as much as possible. Just like a newly married bride remembers her groom all the time, we remember God all the time. So we are considered the wives or the brides of God, which is also mentioned in Bible and all religious scriptures. Even in Mahabharata, it is said that uh, Sri Krishna uh, killed Kans and he, he, he released 16,108 unmarried girls from the prison of Kans. So, uh, sorry, it is actually Narakasur. So he fought against Narakasur, but no matter what kind of devil it's represented in religious scriptures, they all uh, represent these five vices. So after releasing those 16,108 girls, Sri Krishna marries all of them and makes them queens. So it is actually that story represents the release of the souls from the clutches of these vices and he makes us the kings and queens of heaven. So this is happening for real and they have created a story over that and they didn't know what it actually mentions that it just came out of them while they created those scriptures. The same applies to Quran, Bible, everything. It is uh, that God rescues us from the world of suffering and makes us eligible to enter the world of happiness and blissfulness that God is considered merciful and the greatest. But if you consider Quran, Bible or Srimad Bhagavad Gita or Ramayana or Mahabharata, you will never find any single incident that makes him merciful or great. Because those religions and the religious scriptures, actually all religions and all religious scriptures are created by the residents of hell who do not know anything about God. Actually, even the residents of heaven, they do not know anything about God. Though they uh, enter heaven by the knowledge of God, after taking birth in heaven, they forget everything, just as we forget our past births. So, Sri Krishna is the number one purest soul that ever lived in this world. Even that purest soul, Sri Krishna, he didn't know that it is through the knowledge of God Shiva that he became the resident of heaven from the resident of hell. So if he himself didn't know anything about God, then do you think the religious founders who created religions in hell do anything, do know anything about God? If Lord Ram, as per Ramayan, saved his wife from the clutches of Ravan, why should we shout Jai Sri Ram, victory to Lord Ram? What does it have anything to do with us? So it is because God Shiva saves us from the clutches of Ravan 
that we are praising. But only thing is, it is God Shiv who does all these things. But the glory goes to those religious founders and the heroes of Mahabharata and Ramayana. It is this simple knowledge that you need to consider yourself to be the soul and remember God as a point of light as much as possible. And also you need to remember the knowledge points from Murali throughout the day that you get rid of your addiction to those vices. This knowledge is as simple as that. But instead of uh, God Shiva, we have included Sri Krishna's name. So it is this knowledge that is the true Gita. But they have included Sri Krishna's name and omitted God Shiva's name altogether from Srimad Bhagavad Gita, which makes it really hard for any anybody to make any sense out of it. So there Sri Krishna says that um, uh, that I have no birth and no death. But obviously, Sri Krishna uh, was born and he died. The same applies to all religious founders, whether it's uh, Muhammad, Buddha, Jesus Christ. Yeah, everybody was born out of mother, so obviously they need to die. But maybe their religious uh, followers may think that they didn't die, they still live. Of course, they live in another body, but they, most of the religions don't even know about the next birth. So without knowing anything about the soul and the father of all souls, the Supreme Soul, God Shiva, who is called Allah by Muslims, uh, Heavenly Godfather by Christians, God is just one. He doesn't take birth. He's an, uh, he's a, He's so tiny that nobody can see him either through naked eyes or through any scientific instruments. He's that tiny. Even we souls are that tiny. That's why nobody ever sees God. So God's direct knowledge doesn't have any story. He gives the knowledge directly. Just think of me and save yourself from the worldly attractions. The more you remember me as a point of light, your mind is going to come out of those worldly attractions so you wouldn't commit any more sins. And the sins that you have committed in the past will get burnt by the remembrance. It is by giving this knowledge God is considered merciful. If he doesn't come at all, if he doesn't do anything, why should we Praise him to be merciful or to be great. It makes no sense, right? And God's knowledge doesn't make people quarrel with each other. It is because of our sins that we face a lot of problems from the nature and from fellow human beings. Despite that, God asks us to face them peacefully. So you shouldn't lose peace. You should not make others lose peace. That's the path of God. Do you think any religion says that? Then how can you call them to be the religion that contains even a tiny bit of knowledge of God? So there are only two paths in this world. One is the path of God that is given directly by God in the end because the knowledge that's required to enter heaven is needed only uh, just before the beginning of heaven, right? That's why God comes in the end of the old world or just before the beginning of the new world. And this is the only path of God that leads you to heaven. And all other paths, whether it comes from any brilliant person or from religious founders, they all comes under the category of the paths of Satan. Yes, he's brilliant enough to make you believe that what he says is the word of God and make you quarrel with each other as it happens in Karnataka in this hijab wearing issue. 
So whether you are going to follow the path of God and remain peaceful and protect yourself or follow the path of Satan and cause pain both to yourself and to others around you, it's totally up to you. But God says it is only humbleness that's going to protect you from the future happenings of the world. The world is going to become so deadly that you can never imagine. So only the humbleness is going to protect you. If you have a tiny bit of body consciousness, if you consider this is my mother, if somebody something is going to happen to your mother, you are going to burst out, at which point you will be punished. Because somebody else is going to hurt you. Likewise, if you have a tiny bit of belief that I'm a Hindu, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, that's enough to provoke you by speaking bad about your religion and then you will end up punishing others and also taking punishment in return. So which is smart? To stay peaceful or to become violent and get the punishment for your past sins? Because there's absolutely no doubt that we are all filled with sins from our past life, even in this birth and from our past births. So don't give any reason for the Maya or Ravan to punish you. Because it is inside you. Before it comes out, through remembrance of God, burn it entirely without leaving even a trace of any voice. So what actually happens in the college by shouting the slogan of Jai Ram and Allahu Akbar is, though the meaning of those slogans is God is great, victory to God, okay, that, that has very good meaning. But the intention with which they shout that is, J. Ravan, J. Satan, that's what it represents. So Satan is very smart. See, they make you quarrel each other. That's what happens when you hold the hand of Satan. So why wait? Hold the hand of God because he himself has come now. It happens only once in 5,000 years. If you are if you're careless to miss him out this time, you are going to miss him forever, thereby you are going to miss your opportunity to enter heaven forever. Because whatever happens in this 5000 year time cycle called Kalpa, that happens repeatedly Kalpa after Kalpa without even the slightest change. Which means, if you are watching this video now in 2022, it obviously means you watch the same video in the last Kalpa, in the same 2022, and you will be watching n number of times in the future in the same 2022. So that accurate is this world drama. So we've been acting without any consciousness about this world drama for the past 5,000 years. It is only in the last 100 years that God gives us this consciousness about the past, present and future. So please make use of it. Om Shanti. Thank you so much for watching this video for this long and only one in billion will have the chance to get this knowledge and if you are watching this video this long, just have no doubt about it that you are definitely one of those 33 billion deities. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to watch this video this long. You wouldn't be able to accept it. You wouldn't be able to follow it. So maybe in the beginning, you will have some doubt about it, but listen to Murli. Go to the nearest Raj Yoga meditation centers. It's absolutely free. So take that knowledge and you will get the answers to all your doubts then nothing is going to stop you from claiming the inheritance of heaven directly from the heavenly Godfather. Om Shanti.
Thanks again for watching. Please share this video with members of all religions, members of your family and friends and relatives, uh, thereby giving them the chance to enter heaven. But it is their luck whether they are going to take it seriously or they are going to just uh, forget it carelessly. Also hit on the thumbs up button if you like this video and leave your valuable comments in the comments section. And please do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.